skills, Pastor. <laughs> He's a little Hispanic kid, and he goes, let me help you. And he said, I'll do a rap. I, I remember the rap. It was new in outreach. Nobody really did that then. I told him, I'm going to give you the mic, but don't you dare cuss. <laughs> and he goes, all right, I won't. 
and he said this. Now you're wanted and haunted by the man you're taunted because you pulled out the dope and you begin to flaunt it up against the car for police shakedown. Try to divide, get a nightstick take down. No way to win, everywhere is it dead. And when you found the dope, you lost all your best friend's handcuff. Shoved into a police car, your little brother's hoping to be just what you are. Phone starts ringing, not expecting a late call. Sorry, but your brother just will beat on an eight ball. He wasn't so lucky at the end of a dope bag. You identify a body by checking his toe tag. Your father is screaming, your mother is crying. There's a call from below, your little brother's lying lifeless. Without a breath in him, your tears start rolling because you're really going to miss him because of an image and people that might mock. You're led like a puppet and masters of white rock peace past your city. How would you like to preach after that? I loved it. He was a little kid. He stood up. He was a Gideon for a moment. He, he took a risk in front of his whole neighborhood. They knew him. We were the visitors. This was where he lived. It had a greater impact on everybody there than anything else we would ever say. And so you, my friend, you have to live in Yukon to really reach Yukon. You got to know Yukon. The warriors are in this room. The people that will make a difference in this community, in this great state, and actually in this country called Canada, are in this room. Why shouldn't you take Toronto? Why shouldn't it be the Yukon? Why shouldn't you take the big places? Why does it got to be some fancy guy coming out here? He probably hasn't even fought a bear like David. Some of you have. He sure don't have a harpoon. I'll tell you what. God wants to use you. He doesn't discount you. You're exactly the kind of people he calls. You're exactly the kind of people he chooses. And so now, I want you to close your eyes one more time. And we're going to pray. I ask you, God, to cover this place with your spirit, with the power of the Holy Spirit of the living God. No man is saved unless the spirit draws him. The spirit of God empowers people. It calls people. No man is called of God without the spirit of the living God. I pray, God, that you would invade our hearts. But God, I stand in front of some of the finest young people I've ever met in my life. But God, they're far different than where I live. I, I, they're tough, God. They're, they're strong. They face huge obstacles. But there's something about them, God. There's something about them. Let them know that, Lord God, your answer to them isn't what they wanted. It's not an explanation of why they're here, of why their family struggle, of why it's so tough sometimes, of why stuff costs so much money, of why, why the, that's not an answer, an explanation, but it is an answer that says, go. And you empower them. God, let them see, Lord Jesus, that some of them, they just need to step out. They come to camp, they're trying to survive, and you call them to live, not survive, to go make a difference in their community. Lord God, let them know that the minute they take that step, people will help equip them. People will help see it. It won't be easy. And there won't be everybody see it. There'll be a few. It only takes a few mentors. It doesn't take 20. It takes two I ask you, God, that you would allow them, Lord God, to see it. If you're in this place right now and you don't know Jesus Christ, I'm going to give you an opportunity. But that's not what this altar calls for. I'm going to give you an opportunity because I will never miss an opportunity for someone to be under the anointing of God, the Spirit of God, and say, I want to receive Jesus. I'm going to come back to that. But before that, I want you to be ready because the altar call that I'm going to give today is for people that say, I want to serve God. I want to be called to the ministry. I want to make my life. And ministry is not preaching from a pulpit. I have a friend that ministers in a, in a homeless a, a, a hotel for, for people that only pay $5 to go in that hotel. It's the most ratty, horrible, infested, all dope heads, all crack cocaine users, homeless people. It's just got a bed that you would not want to sleep in, a bathroom down the hall and a light hanging in it. And this hotel, he ministers in it, and it's his ministry, and he treats it like it's a Marriott. Like it, he treats those people, he goes, I treat them like the king is walking in the door, because that's my ministry, see? And he reaches them. He reaches them for God. You see, your ministry could be far different. It might be running a skate shop in a, in a big city, or it might be taking skateboards to somewhere that never could even get them. You don't even know. It's bigger than that. It's bigger than 
preaching or speaking. It, it, it's your athletic ability, being used for God, playing on a basketball team that would travel from country to country. And at the end of the game, you would stand up and say, I'm from the Yukon, and share your testimony from God. It's so amazing when you talk about ministry. And we're in this place right now, and you felt throughout this week, but especially tonight, that God was tugging at your heart. Maybe you're a Gideon. Maybe you feel like all the odds are stacked against you, but you know that you want God to do something. And God would say, Lloyd, call the warriors out tonight. Call the warriors. If you say, I really feel that God's impressing on my heart, that my life is for a purpose, to serve God, to do something in, in the ministry capacity, to share the love of Jesus, to know God and to make him known to people, raise your hand wherever you are. I want to pray for you. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. I'm going to ask the leaders to look up. They need to see you. The leaders need to see you. They need to see you. They need to pray for you. I'm going to ask my team to stand up and go to find some people. We're just going to pray together. Look at the hand. These are people that say, I have purpose. I want to make a difference. And it's not in a typical way. It's not in some little church. It's bigger than that. It's maybe a city or maybe a country or maybe traveling the world. It's big, but I feel God's calling me to ministry right now. We're going to pray together. All those of you that just